We're starting the second half of the Accolade Concerto, and we are back home. The music is the same as the beginning, or at least very similar. So, this is a recapitulation of sorts, even though the piece is not in sonata form. At any rate, it is a return. It's a return home to musical material that we're now very familiar with. This is always a satisfying moment for the player and for the listener, returning home. But home is never quite the same, is it? It's like returning to your old neighborhood where you grew up. You've lived. You've changed. Things look different. So, the concerto is half over. We've had a lot of musical adventures. So the same music takes on a different emotional context. And that will reflect itself in our playing. <laughs> It's familiar now. The desperate soprano isn't so frantic anymore. She's more relaxed. She's confident. And you, the player, are also more relaxed. It's always easier the second time, isn't it? It has a little bit of a grazioso quality. Grazioso. Graceful. Now we're heading for another one of those operatic high points. This should be a violinistic high point, too. You need to achieve comfort and security in this high register so you can give this passage the singing, passionate quality that it needs. You can practice the passage for tone quality, like this. Playing each note several times, to cultivate a full, unforced singing tone. Then the next step... All separate bows in a nice, comfortable, slow tempo. I'm really not in any particular tempo. I'm just taking my time on every note and traveling cleanly from one note to the next. And gradually it will turn into this. C lands on a down bow. So that I can be near the tip to make a graceful transition into the next section. Now, we have something new. Contained in the violin part is a melody and accompaniment. Here's the melody. There's even a little counter melody sneaking in. Mr. Ackley marks little accents on the melody notes. Most likely we'd want to do that anyway, even if it weren't marked. Once again, we have the phrasing pattern that we found earlier. Each three-note group starts on the second note of the beat and ends on the next beat. feeling the beat in the right place. It becomes easier when we add the piano. Now, we're going to bring out the melody. How can we do that? 
We do it with bow distribution. Now, how are we going to bring out the melody? We do it with bow distribution. Small, small, big. 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 But not with bow pressure. That's crude. So we do it with bow distribution. from the left hand. The melody note gets a little spurt of vibrato, and the in-between notes do not. So that gives the melody notes a singing quality. Let's hear it in tempo. Lies very nicely in second position, by the way, so we don't have any difficult stretches. Some editions have an open E marked, which I intensely dislike. No, the E is a melody note. Play it in second position with the third finger, with a good vibrato. of the music just changed. Now all the notes are melodic. And that should be reflected in our bow distribution. Pattern. Let's start softly and make a big crescendo to the climax. Make sure you keep track of the beat. It helps to listen to the piano. And then, when the piano drops out, that's an invitation from the composer to play the next section with some freedom. In fact, it's a little cadenza. Start slowly, speed up, and then slow down. 